Today, we're going to talk about suppression, what it is and how it affects our well-being. If you're a coach, consultant, or well-being entrepreneur, grab free science-based content to grow your business by clicking the ebook link in the description below. What is suppression? Suppression is defined as pushing unwanted thoughts, emotions, memories, fantasies, and more out of conscious awareness so that we're not thinking of these things anymore. But what exactly does it mean to not think of something? Perhaps in an ideal world, it would mean that the thought is gone, erased, or no longer affecting us in any way. Unfortunately, the human brain doesn't work quite like that. A series of experiments where people were told not to think of a white bear proved that suppression is actually quite hard. Even though thinking about white bears is something we don't do very often, simply being told not to think about a white bear, in other words, to suppress these thoughts, led these people to think of white bears more frequently. This research showed that the mental processes we use for suppression don't really work to decrease thoughts. To better understand suppression, let's talk about the different types. First is thought suppression. Any thoughts can be suppressed regardless of whether or not they have emotional content. The classic white bear experiments described previously are an example of pure thought suppression. But in real life, it may be rare to suppress thoughts that don't have some emotional content. Perhaps we don't want to think about a recent romantic relationship breakup. Maybe we don't want to worry about an upcoming test at school. Or we may try not to think about that car that just cut us off in traffic. Whether or not these examples would be considered thought suppression or emotional suppression is difficult to say. As you may have guessed, the second type of suppression is emotional suppression. If anyone has ever told you to just stop feeling anxious or angry or sad, then they've just given you some bad advice, as they have just told you to use emotional suppression, which we already know doesn't work. Plus, suppressing emotional material is far more difficult than suppressing neutral material, like white bears. Within the research on emotional suppression, we may also be interested in expressive suppression. Expressive suppression is when we suppress the emotions on our faces. Maybe we don't want others to see that we're feeling sad, fearful, or angry, so we don't display these emotions. Expressive suppression is another ineffective form of emotional suppression that may be bad for our well being. So what are the impacts of suppression? Overall, research on suppression has found that it tends to result in three specific and not so good effects. One, there is an immediate surge in the unwanted thoughts when using suppression. Two, the unwanted thoughts increasingly intrude upon other thoughts as time goes by. And three, a period of active suppression actually enhances the occurrence of unwanted thoughts. That means that suppression has paradoxical effects. The more we try to force our thoughts or emotions away, the stronger they become. So why doesn't suppression work? Well, there are likely a number of reasons why suppression doesn't work. Here are a few offered by the experts. One reason may be that the way we distract ourselves from unwanted thoughts is flawed. For example, imagine you're distracting yourself from your thoughts and worries about work. Maybe you look around the room and try thinking of things you see, a chair, a book, a plant, or a table. Unfortunately, if we're thinking about something and then look at an object, the thoughts and the objects can get paired in our minds. Now, whenever we look at these objects, they remind us of the unwanted thoughts, so they come back up more easily. So if you've been suppressing thoughts and now they're coming back up, 
moving yourself to a different room or space may actually help you feel better. Another reason why suppression may not work is that some part of us wanted to think about these unwanted thoughts. Suppressing them interrupts the process and therefore prevents us from completing the goal. So our brain keeps bringing us back to the thoughts we're trying to suppress. One last reason why suppression doesn't work may be that when we suppress a thought, we've just labeled it in our brains as bad. Unfortunately, our brains have unconscious processes that help us keep an eye out for quote unquote bad things. We want to keep them in mind so they don't hurt us. Unfortunately, when it comes to unwanted or anxiety provoking thoughts, keeping them in mind is exactly what does hurt us. So what is the opposite of suppression? Technically, the opposite of suppression may be expression. Instead of forcing our thoughts away, we experience them, show them, and maybe even share them with others. Given suppression is such an ineffective strategy, you might think expression is the solution, but it really depends on what exactly we do. For example, venting emotions doesn't tend to be the best way to resolve them. In fact, we might make these thoughts and emotions last even longer by continuing to think or talk about them. On the flip side, research suggests that expressing negative emotions can have beneficial functions. For example, showing negative emotions on your face may help you accomplish your goals. Specifically, sadness expressions may help you elicit social support and anger expressions may help you correct an injustice. What about acceptance? Is acceptance the opposite of suppression? Some research suggests that the opposite of suppression might actually be acceptance. Instead of forcing thoughts and emotions out of our consciousness, we accept them, let them be, and allow them to exit our consciousness in their own time. Given the research discussed earlier, it seems that acceptance would help us avoid the pitfalls of suppression. Thoughts wouldn't get linked to objects. We wouldn't have to stop ourselves from thinking these thoughts. And we wouldn't label these thoughts as bad. As a result, the thoughts may actually dissipate faster and easier. Indeed, this is exactly what the research shows. While suppressing thoughts and emotions paradoxically increases them, accepting thoughts and emotions paradoxically decreases them. So let's talk about how to deal with suppression. If you're the type of person who tends to suppress thoughts and emotions, you'll likely have an easier time managing these thoughts and emotions with other, healthier strategies. Here are a few to try. First, write about your feelings. Research suggests that writing about your feelings may be an effective way to process those feelings more quickly and move past them. Second, practice acceptance. As noted previously, accepting emotions may help decrease negative emotional responses more quickly. Third, try cognitive reappraisal. Research on emotion regulation often contrasts suppression with reappraisal, and reappraisal wins as the more effective strategy. Reappraisal simply involves looking at your situation in ways that reduce negative emotions or increase positive emotions. You can do this by thinking about the potential positive outcomes of a situation or how grateful you are that the situation isn't worse. Fourth, consider non-cognitive approaches. Psychology often focuses on the cognitive or mental approaches we can use to change our thoughts and emotions. But some research suggests that behavioral strategies may be just as effective or maybe even more so. For example, if you're having a hard time with some negative thoughts or emotions, 
doing vigorous exercise may be helpful. If your body and brain are forced to use resources elsewhere to do the exercise, this seems to help distract the mind more easily. Other non-cognitive strategies involve doing a pleasant activity or spending time with friends. Increasing positive emotions can often undo negative emotions, which helps these emotions resolve on their own. Suppression is a common response to the experience of unwanted thoughts or emotions, but it's not the ideal response. Learning to undo our suppression habit and instead use healthier emotion management strategies is key to helping us respond to our negative emotions more quickly and easily. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and check out our free resources at berkeleywellbeing.com.